You know, to most of us, that simple act doesn't get a second thought. We probably can't remember how many times we've done it already today. But if you're one of the thousands of Canadians who suffered a spinal cord injury, the simple act of getting out of bed in the morning or just getting ready for the day becomes an incredible hurdle to overcome if it wasn't for the help and support of others. Hi, I'm Patrick McKenna. Over the next few minutes, we'll meet some amazing people with spinal cord injuries who never take no for an answer. And the doctors behind a medical miracle designed to have our wheelchair-bound friends up and walking again within the next five years. That's right, walking again within the next five years. That's their goal. So let's see how they plan to get there and how you can help. Come on. At McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario, the spinal cord injury research team led by Dr. Michelle Rathbone worked tirelessly to find a cure for this life-altering affliction. In the summer of 2006, the team had a major breakthrough when they successfully regenerated nerves in the spines of rats by transplanting cells from the animal's own intestine to its spinal cord. It was the first time a chronically injured animal was able to walk again by restoring the pathway from the brain to the legs. It was no longer dependent on help from anyone else. This is what the team at McMaster can do for countless Canadians if the research were to continue. So, let's talk to Dr. Rathbone and see how close they are to realizing their goal. Can you give us an idea of where you and your team are in actually helping someone walk again? The first approach has been to take cells from the intestine of the rat, and we can take the cells that support that and transplant them into an injured site in spinal cord. And we've shown in a series of experiments over several years, first of all, that these stimulate nerves to grow through the spinal cord. Uh, secondly, that they form functional connections. And third, uh, that they have in fact been able to uh, make um, improvement in function in spinal injured rats. Now, the second approach we've taken uh, is to use a naturally occurring uh, substance called guanosine that's present in all our cells. What we've been able to do very recently is to uh, show that this improves function even after chronic injury in rats. And together, uh, one is causing nerve fibers to grow, and the other is then putting the insulation on the nerve fibers. Now let's maybe take this from the working from the outside in. Uh, who would indirectly benefit from your research continuing? For example, people with uh, multiple sclerosis and, and spinal uh, problems from multiple sclerosis uh, and uh, other disorders of that sort. So the indirect is to a broader audience. The obvious question is, I guess, then who directly benefits from your research continuing? Uh, first quadriplegics, um, also paraplegics, um, uh, and then uh, very closely behind uh, people with other spinal uh, diseases. So you've obviously had success with the rat. Where do you go next? Before you can uh, try anything in humans, um, uh, one has to try it in other models. And um, from my point of view, the best model is um, dogs, because dogs have spinal injuries. Dogs get run over. Dogs have certain um, disc problems that cause um, paraplegia. Uh, and it would be possible to try these uh, techniques in animals um, who have developed spinal cord injuries, wouldn't need to be injured, but in fact um, uh, could be potentially helped then that goes into humans after that. Now, where does all the money go from the success of all these marathons? About $2 million uh, could be spent immediately or would be spent immediately um, on equipment. After that, there's a cost of the lab per year. Um, and the cost, for example, of uh, postdoctoral fellows may cost $60,000, dollars uh, to employ. So uh, then there are various other costs, even without going into human studies. Um, a lab running at about $800,000 a year is a modest laboratory by, um, by large North American standards. Now, where does Canada stand in this race? Well, although um, we're obviously a tenth the size of the U.S., um, the work that we're doing in Canada, I think, stands um, equal or better than anywhere in the world. Um, it's just a matter of, of uh, putting the resources to it. So, Dr. Rathman, can you give us an idea of what difference our contributions really make? Well, it would be the difference between perhaps 100 years and uh, five years. So if, if possibly uh, people can contribute at this level, um, then there's a whole team of dedicated scientists who are very anxious to be part of the solution. And uh, we'll work around the clock to make it happen, but, but 
tools have to be available for them to make it happen. So you see, the continuation of Dr. Rathbone's work is crucial not only the economy by reduced health care expenses to all Canadians, but especially those directly affected by spinal cord injuries. Let's meet one of them now. After an airplane accident left Charlie Satinsky paralyzed from the waist down, he was determined not to let it slow him down. Once he heard about Dr. Rathbone's work, Charlie became the driving force behind the Spinal Neurorestorative Society, an organization dedicated to raising funds for research through annual marathons and a once-in-a-lifetime national event. So, Charlie, why don't you tell us a little bit about how the accident has affected your life? Well, this uh, kind of injury is uh, life-altering. It, it, it affects you in every way that you can imagine and some that you can't. Before I was jogging, I was mountain climbing, I was flying airplanes in. Now, all of that is denied to me. Now I have to do what I can do when you're in a wheelchair and that's really the only very few things. When you're changing the way you, you were meant to be, you've changed a lot of parameters and uh, it's uh, probably the worst thing that can happen to somebody that's active. And how has it affected your families? It is a big challenge, actually, and knowing what my father's life was like prior to the accident, um, the family's wrestling with, well, how do we help out and, and how do we ensure that there is still an exciting life, you know, available for him. And it did shift a lot of our uh, focus and attention on helping other people um, working together as a team. It's brought us all together even closer than we ever were before, um, but more with, with the focus and the attention to, to help other people who don't have that support network. Well, what would it mean to you to walk again? For me, to be part of this change means more than just me walking. It means 42 million people that are in wheelchair because, in, around the world because of spinal cord injury. Will, will get huge benefit from it. Since I got injured, I, I, I see people that are quadriplegics. I see people that are 100 times worse than I am. I almost feel ashamed of myself sometimes when I complain. And I say, well, you know what, I can't do this, I can't do that, because in my mind there's always Mark of Ferrara who's, who's running his successful business, but he has to be put to bed, he has to be taken out of the bed and dressed in order to be able to get to work. For Marco, he doesn't even dream to walk. For Marco, just to get his fingers back would be a thousand percent improvement. So you have to believe it's going to happen. Absolutely. I will walk again. Well, what are you doing to make it happen? We are running these Golden Horseshoe Marathons by, to, in order to support the research. So for the 10th year anniversary, and in order to raise the funds necessary to finish off that research, we're going across Canada. We're going to start in Victoria, BC, and 10,000 kilometers later, we'll dip our wheels at the, in, the, in the Atlantic in St. John's, Newfoundland. That's 10 years of Golden Horseshoe Marathons, that's 10 provinces, and 10,000 kilometers, and $10 million. Okay, and why are you doing this event? I dreamed that I will walk again. Also, I'm not used to give, giving up or failing, so I think that it is possible to fix it. I think that the technology is there. We, we, need, we need funding now, we need money. It's all that's really required that left to be done. My purpose is to go out there, generate that source of funds, and uh, see it to the end. So, what can you do to help? I'm glad you asked. Simply call our toll-free number, or go to our website and click on Donate. It's that simple. If you'd like to volunteer your time or resources, just give us a call and let us know what you can do. With help and support from everyday people like you and me, this research can continue, and thousands of families will be rewarded by loved ones who will walk again. Thank you for your support.